Hey guys, good morning. I'm Tony with HVAC Explained. I am working at an industrial facility today. Now, every facility has their own safety protocols. Everything's different. Always consult with their general safety manager. Also consult with your shop. Now, at this facility, they require hard hats, okay? Safety glasses, steel toe boots, steel toe boots. In this facility, it gets very dirty. Tyvek suit, okay? They make multiple different sizes and different types, okay? Make sure you use the one that they require. Um, also, as you can see, I do not have a beard at this time. I had to shave it off because they changed their safety protocol. They used to require us to wear these simple masks that tuck up against your face, okay? Well, they require now you must be cleanly shaven in order to wear these around the plant. They do have another option to wear a whole head battery pack harness that it gives a pressurized air feeling into the mask and pushes out any dust and debris when you go to breathe in, okay? We currently have them on order. Due to the COVID situation, things aren't in at this time. So we actually have to use these. This is, uh, I believe, an organic type filter respirator. I'll zoom in and get you guys the numbers in case you would need them, okay? You can generally pick these up at any Granger or uh, sometimes Home Depot actually sells them. So when these cups do come off of here, they create a good seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and install and put on these items before I get started. Not to mention earplugs. You need to put earplugs in, okay? Trust me, we need all of our senses. We need our eyes, ears, nose, and mouth, and fingers. Wear gloves, wear your earplugs, wear your safety glasses. Trust me, safety makes a big part. You're gonna be in this field for a long time. Follow the rules. Technically, to put these earplugs in, you have to do that. Reach over your head, lift up your ear. It stretches out your earlobe. Insert those earplugs. Make sure they're good and tight. Air mask, place it on. I stick my hands over the sides, breathe in and out, make sure it sucks in and out. A good tight seal. Okay guys, so I had to move my work van over to the location where I will be working this morning on this first service call. The first service call is on a hot metal crane that basically outdoor conditions today in Pittsburgh, about 25 degrees Fahrenheit. The crane's sitting at a landing at about 25 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? Then it has to run over to pick up a heavy cauldron of metal that they are separating cadmium, mercury, and lead out of the system and pulling off slag and separating metals. 3,000 plus degrees Fahrenheit. So that crane is doing this with temperature swings, okay? It's very harsh, it's very dirty, it can be very dangerous, that's why we gotta wear all this PPE gear. Now, um, that unit is being worked to death in heat and cool modes. First things first, I wanna shut it down, remove access panels, then I wanna use an air gun to completely blow it out, clean it all out, and get started here. Okay, because it doesn't make sense to just start troubleshooting something if it's all packed in with dirt and debris and filters are plugged, belts falling off. I don't know when the maintenance was last done on it. I don't really care at this time. I just want to do the basic maintenance and get started. So, but that's what makes you a better technician. The more service calls, the more odd random ones you take, the better because you get experienced all throughout this industry. It, it's very good to do. It, it just rounds you off as a better technician than you know, doing a basic maintenance on the same piece of equipment day in and day out. Go take multiple service calls, 
boilers, chillers, refrigeration, exhaust fans, wh whatever it is, go take a different service call. It, it, it's good to do. So, okay guys, I gotta go notify them what I am here to do to go fix them up. Um, I gotta be cautious with what I'm filming on this one because um, I know they'll, um, I have to actually clear this video with them. So, um, so I do apologize if I can't film some stuff, but I'll do what I can. So, but I want to show the future technicians what you can experience in this field. So, follow me. The device that I am first working on here is called the positive pressure box. This is located on the back side of the crane. The manufacturer of this device is Linturn. Linturn deals with industrial heating, cooling, ventilation equipment. This unit requires maintenance. There are an assortment of filters inside of here, such as a fresh air intake that feeds into a pre-filter screen, then followed by a standard pleated MERV 7 or MERV 8 filter. Then it goes through two sets of charcoal filters to remove odors and certain organic gases out of the air. Then finally, after going through its blower motor, we'll go through the HEPA filter that is required to be blown out once per month then it feeds a positive pressure into the crane cab. This positive pressure being fed into the crane cab will keep the crane much more cleaner and safer for the operator to breathe and work in keeping debris out. We must all do our maintenance properly and follow it according to the manufacturer specs.
by utilizing the compressed air gun, I am filling the crane cab with positive pressure blowing out the debris from inside the air handler. Also, the door is open on the crane so the positive pressure is allowing that bad, dirty air to escape. just a little history on this piece of equipment that I am currently working on. A few years ago, this crane and air conditioner system was involved in a major fire at this facility. The fire was so hot and so intense from the ground, and we're currently about 65 feet up off the ground, there were aerosol cans that had exploded laying up on that crane as I was taking my service call. Inside the control compartment, nearly all the wiring was nothing more than bare copper. The contactors were all melted together. I had to replace all those. Some of the electrical supports that are plastic are still permanently melted inside the control compartment. After replacing this, the unit would not fire up in cooling after I had found there's no refrigerant in the system due to the safety relief plug solder had melted out of the condenser causing the refrigerant to vent. That's just example of how hot and dangerous this was. I'm using the plant compressed air to clean out the condenser thoroughly. This will lower head pressure, not to mention make it easier for me to identify parts on the equipment. taking service calls and performing maintenances, it is not a bad practice to check wiring 
over time with expansion and contraction, wiring can become loose that will cause a high amp draw and cause callbacks. Inside this air handler we have our evaporator coil. This coil does need a good cleaning. We have our blower motor. We have the back side of our evaporator coil along with our resistive electric heater. This heater breaker was tripped. I'm suspecting either a carbon mark had caused it to short to ground, which has happened before, or possible lack of airflow heater was getting too hot and tripping the breaker on high amps.
I would love to take this mask off and say something, but I can't. But, so that I can smell the heat kicking in. This is for the positive pressure. It's a box that sits on the back side. Looking good. Okay, so, uh, yeah, it might be a little too noisy here. Um, hopefully you guys are getting this. Okay, so I've been coming here for quite some time. And uh, that equipment, basically it's in its worst case scenario environment. Normally it just needs a good maintenance, a good cleaning. And as you can tell, I need a good cleaning too. Uh, I'm going to work on a couple more things on maintenance before I decide to clean up because a bunch of my tools are now permanently stained, but I keep an old set of tools uh, just for up here. So, uh, now, intricate circuit breaker inside. I did not check amp draw on that. I'll admit I did not check that at this time. It is currently running. They did have to get the crane back up online. Um, so it's limited on time when I can have that down. Um, pretty much what goes on is if if there's all that cadmium uh, dust that's around those coils, it causes a higher amp draw, it overheats, uh, it can trip it because of high amps. Sometimes I have had a carbon mark where a little trace of that metallic dust will get in there and it'll cause it to arc and then trip that breaker. So that's why I pull off, there's a, uh, a protective uh, shield that debris gets around. This dust goes everywhere, okay? I have a separate set of boots that I scrub down. Okay guys, my camera apparently shut off because the battery is going low. So as you can see, it is very dirty, it is very harsh. Um, that is a part of this field. I mean, there's good jobs, there's bad jobs. So take the good with the bad, so, but, end of the day if you like what you do which heating and air i find it very interesting um i do have trouble with like sitting there and reading a book but doing hands-on keeps my mind occupied keeps me busy and i don't know it's just the mechanical side that i like so try to go with your talents all right well if you like what you see please like comment subscribe thank you very much for watching hvac explain please um Leave comments if you have any questions, uh, concerns. Um, I probably could have done stuff a little bit safer. My one earplug had fallen out as I was up there. Unfortunately, I did not have another one on me. I couldn't run outside that quick to get a new one. So, but it happens when you stretch and lean and pull and whatnot. So, okay, have a good day. Thank you for watching.